Welcome! In this module, we will cover schematic navigation, learning how to find our way around the design schematics within Altium Designer. After looking at the navigation features, we will focus more on moving around within the schematic window, as well as some of the schematic sheet settings. Looking at our old familiar SL1 project, we see the various schematics nested under the top level schematic. As mentioned earlier, this project is a hierarchical one, with sub schematics wired together at the top level. The nesting of the schematics shown in the project panel is another visual clue to the design structure. Looking at the project panel shows us the top level and the sublevels to the design, but, but does not really give us the insight needed to understand the design. A useful tool for getting the quick peek at the schematics is to hover over their icons in the project panel. Doing so enables you to see the thumbnail views of their corresponding schematics. This was enabled in the Design Insight settings of our preferences, as shown here under the System, Design Insight, Connectivity Insight options. Notice they're all checked. Each of these preference settings provides additional insight into the design or its components. In an earlier module, I showed you how to jump down into a subsheet by holding the Control key and double-clicking on the schematic sheet symbol. This streamlines following the design data or control flow in the schematic. We can also follow a wire or bus in the design after compiling the project to create a unified data model. Once compiled, hovering over a wire or bus will generate a pop-up window. This pop-up window shows which schematics the wire or bus connections, including a preview window of the schematic sheet. If you see a blank schematic sheet, that is because the schematic sheet was not yet opened in this session. I generally open all the schematic sheets to enable this graphical tracing of connections through the hierarchy. To show this, hover the mouse over a wire entering the config block. We see this wire connects to both the FPGA and the config schematics with the wire highlighted. Now if you click on the schematic listed, it will open up the schematic. This can be a great way for reviewing a design by following the data or the control flow of the design. To clear any highlighting, hold the shift key and type C. One more tool that provides the project design structure as well as giving components and net information is the Navigator panel. To open up the Navigator panel, click on the Panels tab and select the Navigator option. Here we are looking at the Navigator panel and there is a lot of information. The top pane shows the schematics in the project nested if needed. The second pane shows the components and the third pane lists the nets and buses. The bottom pane lists further details of selected elements from the upper panes. We will briefly examine some of these panes and will leave the rest of them for you to explore on your own. Clicking on a lower level schematic, we can see the listings of the lower panes update. We see the components on the selected schematic listed by instances, the list of all the nets and buses, and the port list for the schematic as well. If you click on a component, the schematic will be opened if needed and the selected component highlighted. The port listing changes and shows the selected pins of the component. Clicking on the schematic sheet will clear the highlighting and masking. This is a great way to find a particular instance in a large design. Likewise, clicking on a net listed highlights the net on the schematic, showing the connections and location within the design for the nets is one useful feature when looking for a particular design element. Now that we can get around the project schematics, both to trace a net and find components, the next handy operation is changing the schematic view, which we have seen but not really talked about during these modules. We can zoom in and out using the mouse. To zoom in, place the mouse on the schematic window, clicking on it to make sure the schematic window is active. Now hold the control key down while you scroll the mouse button. The location of the mouse pointer in the schematic window is the centroid for the zooming action. Pushing the wheel forward zooms in, scrolling backwards zooms out. Likewise, to scroll left or right, hold the shift key down and scroll the mouse wheel. To pan in the window, just hold the right mouse button down and drag the mouse. The other more menu-driven method is to use the view pull-down menu. This will give you access to a number of view-changing features. Selecting view, area, allows us to select a rectangle with the mouse to zoom in on. While the pull-down menu is active, you may have noticed that there are some letters underlined in the listing. These are reminder hints for the shortcuts that Altium supports. 
I can't say enough about shortcuts. The ones you use all the time, you will remember. We could select View, Fit Document to zoom out to the entire document. Notice the other option to fit all objects. We could select that from the pull-down menu, or if we go into the schematic and right-click the pop-up menu, has some of the commonly used commands, fit all objects being one of them. Selecting that, we zoom into view that shows only the objects in the schematic. The shortcuts that you use all the time, again, you'll remember. A few favorites are V and F, or V and D. Simply hitting these key sequences will drive the view directly and can save a lot of time. I also use the following shortcut, J and C, or jump to component. This opens up a window for entering the instance name of the component that you are looking for. Let's try finding U1 in the design. Typing JC and then entering U1 and hitting return, we jump to the schematic with U1. I picked U1 as a bonus to show that with a multi-part component, we can still jump to the component and then sequence through them until we find the subpart that we are looking for. By the way, JC or jump to component works both in the schematic and the PCB views. Notice that the schematics appear masked. We can unmask the current schematic by clicking on the editor tab at the bottom of the window. The named tab is the compiler view of the schematic showing only really the components. Within the schematic window, if you click and hold down the right mouse button, a menu will open. This is a quick way to access a number of the more common operations as we said. Right-clicking in the window, we see a number of options. Find similar objects, clear filter, and place. We could use the clear filter or shift C to clear selected objects. I often just click somewhere in the schematics to clear the selections. The other two menu options, find similar objects and place, we will look at in a future module. Picking project options from the pop-up menu opens the project options window. There are numerous settings that we will explore in future modules. The key takeaway here is that there are project level settings that are associated with this project. Of interest are the project and sheet level parameters. Clicking on the project parameters tab, we see the current project parameters. We would use a project level parameter for common project used string text like project name. Adding a parameter entails clicking on the add button and supplying the desired name and value. To change its value, click on the value field and enter the new value. The typical default value is the asterisk. To remove a parameter, click on it and hit the remove button. Sheet parameters are local to the sheet and would normally contain the schematic title, designer, and checker names. To access the sheet parameters, open up the properties panel and click on the parameters tab. The parameters tab shows all the sheet level parameters. These can be used in text strings, as we discussed earlier. You can modify this list using the button shown. Adding a parameter is done by clicking on the Add button and entering the needed information, such as name and value. A default value of asterisk is listed and can be left for now. Deleting is accomplished using the trash can icon after selecting. Editing the parameter is easy as clicking on the field and entering the new text. Note the system predefined parameter values are locked such as sheet number and sheet total, and cannot be edited. We have looked at navigating the project design, some shortcut keys using the mouse to move, zoom, and pan, as well as the schematic document option settings. Please do exercise navigating schematics.